Hi everyone and welcome to Google Academy and I'm really excited to be here today as part of the Google Think Retail event. Now my name is AK Ikwakor. I'm a Google Academy facilitator and the funny thing is I grew up in a family of eight. I have a really big family so the holidays were really big for us so that's it's all going to link together soon and the thing is I'm really thrilled to be talking to you to really help you make the most out of the holiday season. Now today I'll be joined by Carol and we're going to share the latest tips for growing in-store sales this holiday season. Now, before we begin, I want to make sure you're in the right place. Now, since there are a few other Think Retail sessions going on right now, for those of you who haven't joined us before for Google Academy, this content is intended for Google Ad users with a minimum of one year of experience. Now, in this session, we'll cover all of the different Google products and strategies for driving in-store sales at a high level. Now, we just wrapped up our session on online sales, which covered our latest e-commerce recommendations. Now, I highly recommend you catch out that video on demand if you weren't able to join us live for it. Now, if you're looking for, we'll say, product-specific deep dives, then we recommend the advanced sessions, which can be found by going to Think Retail homepage. Now to do that, you can scroll down about halfway and then toggling to the right to learn more. Now let's just kick off a few quick housekeeping items to really make sure we're all on the same page. Now, first and foremost, questions are welcome. So please, please, please type in your questions into the box below. We have a team of product specialists who are ready to answer any and all of your questions. But the thing is, please be patient with us though, because we do have a lot of questions coming in and we'll get to all of your questions as quick as possible. Now, we know that many of you want to know if the slides will be available afterwards. Now, unfortunately, we cannot share the slides, but this video will be available on demand and also in addition, we highly recommend you check out the resources tab at the bottom of this page. There is a workbook there, as well as a few other resources that we think you'll really find helpful heading into the holiday season. Lastly, we really appreciate your feedback. So what we want you to do is please take the time to submit the feedback form at the conclusion of this session. It means a lot to us, it means the world to us, and a few lucky winners will even get a chance to win a Google Nest Hub. Now in today's session, first, we'll we actually be starting off by taking a look at what we learned from last year's unique holiday season and what you should also expect from this year. Next, we'll also kick off our four-stage growth formula by discussing how to set objectives also including how to use trends and tools to inform your strategy and also how to plan your investment. We'll also follow this by covering how you can get ready with measurement, automation, and creative. Then we'll also learn strategies for how to capture and generate demand. Now, finally, we'll learn how to evaluate and expand your campaigns so you can really make the most of the opportunity this holiday season. But before we start, I want to introduce the Google Ads Growth Formula. Now, the Google Ads Growth Formula is a four-step formula designed to help advertisers drive maximum growth with Google Ads. Now, we'll be using this framework throughout today's content so I thought it would be really helpful to share a bit more about it before we begin. Now, this formula is benefit driven. You know, it's really aligned to advertiser maturity and also modular, meaning that it can be used for brands and agency clients of really any size, really addressing a lot of the concerns brands and even agency raised in our workshop sessions. And now really in today's session, we're going to be using this formula as a framework for the holiday best practices so that your business can reach maximum growth this holiday season. Now, you probably want to like seeing how this all works. Well, for step one is to really set objectives. 
Now, this is crucial first step where you will make sure all of your marketing efforts align and work hard to support your business objectives. Now, agencies and clients really need to align. Otherwise, it's possible to achieve media campaign goals like a particular cost per acquisition, but really miss the bottom line goals like revenue growth. Now, for step two is to really get ready with what we call the big three. Now, this is where measurement or are, are you really meeting your objectives or strong creative? Like, are you really breaking through and automations? Are you really finding your clients highest value customers or really being built in? Now, getting these right at the outset will make sure you get the most value out of your ads. Now, for step three, it really focuses on taking action across the full funnel, really using the entire suite of Google products to capture and generate demand. Now, for the final step is to evaluate and expand. Now, as time passes, ad performance really becomes clearer. Now, using this information to get insights, you know, even test new strategies and even scale. Now, I highly recommend after this session, you really take a look at how this formula comes to life on the new website. And you can see that at go.co.growth formula. Now, it's incredibly interactive, and I'm confident that this formula and the website will be a really valuable tool for your business as you prepare for the holiday season. Now, let's start by taking a step back and looking at last year's unique holiday season. Now, the 2020 shopping season was the biggest ever for digital spending, with over 1.1 trillion in global sales, and 45% of all the digital holiday spend really actually happened by the end of Cyber Week. So let's just keep in mind also like what was happening in the world during that time, like really during the pandemic, as a lot of shoppers were in home really making their purchasing decisions. Now, last year, we also saw that shopping last started earlier. So pre-Cyber Week saw the greatest year-over-year -year revenue growth at 83%, and e-commerce also paved the way with 50% of global digital revenue, really between you know the November and December from the previous year. And even within the United States, it saw 44% digital revenue growth, and even in Canada, saw 70%. Now, keeping all of the growth from last year in mind, many of you are probably wondering, like, really what to expect this year. It's really important to really be thinking about, like, during the pandemic, we saw a dramatic shift towards e-commerce. You know, as the research indicates, last year's shift to digital happened quickly and since it's stabilized at an elevated level. So it's likely that e-commerce will probably not continue to accelerate at the same rate it did in 2020, but there is still a ton of opportunity this season when it comes to holiday shopping. You know, as many behaviors have shifted forever, and even there's even more eyeballs on online than ever before. Now, the new digital first behaviors we learned in 2020 will continue this year. You know, as we look at search interest for the near me and online globally, it's clear that online and even offline retail behaviors have converged and omnichannel has become really the new normal. And as this will influence really the way you should prepare for a successful holiday season, you know, categories continue to shift. So it's important to keep an eye on the latest trends and insights to inform your strategy. See, even with the performance planner, it's a great way to really forecast campaigns and plan for budgets, especially during seasonal moments when it's harder to predict allocation. And lastly, really leaning into automation will allow you to be flexible at any moment and successfully navigate the holiday season ahead. Now, while I know it might be tough to beat 2020 e-commerce gains, 
with best practices in place, your business can actually unlock this season's full potential. See, here at Google, we're looking forward to really helping you achieve your goals. We're here with you every step of the way. Now, let's take a moment and take a look at our first step in the growth formula. And that is really gonna be setting objectives. Now, we'll also cover really how to set the investments as well. Now, in this step, it's critical identifier, like what is it that you want to achieve this holiday season? And to make sure all of your objectives and KPIs are working together to really, to make sure that you really achieve that goal. Now, a lot of planning and conversations should go into this first step. You know, you should really be taking a look at current trends and getting measurable and time-bound goals and also really aligning your businesses, your marketing, looking at your media and your campaign KPIs and also planning your investment. Now we know that you're already, you know, it's close to September. So in terms of your holiday planning, this step is likely already happened. However, it's always a good idea to review your goals and make sure they follow best practices, which is why it's still really important for us to cover this today in today's session. Now, as we discussed, 2021 is a unique year. So you may have business goals that are different from this holiday season. So for example, you may want to increase volume and make up for lower demand in first half of the year. Now, this may mean adding more flash sales on your site or even increasing marketing efficiency goals. You may also have want to increase your profit and your ROI, right? Return on your investment. Now, as we mentioned earlier, e-commerce skyrocketed in 2020 and holiday behaviors changed forever. That being said, we want you to be mindful of using 2020 as your baseline for this year's holiday goals. Now, we recommend that you also take a close look at 2019 results as you evaluate and also set your targets for your business. Now, also, when you're developing your holiday strategy and even your goals, it's critical to take a look at the latest trends. Now, we've heard feedback from retailers like you that you're not sure how to go about finding and really analyzing these trends. Now, the good news is we're here to help and we've launched great tools to help retailers just like you. Now, with that, it's rising retail categories. Now, this gives you insight into the fastest growing product related search categories in Google search, along with the locations where they're growing and the search queries associated with them. Now, from these insights, you can really gain new product and merchandising ideas. You know, even adjust your website and landing page content to align with products and categories that are growing. And you can even allocate your budget to capture changing category demand. Now, with the Shopping Insights Report, it gives you further insight into the specific products and brands that are popular or even trending down. You know, this is updated daily. This report will really give you shopping trends through daily search data for about 55,000 products, 45,000 plus brands, and nearly 5,000 categories. You can even see how products and brand popularity varies across all of the 2000 DMAs region in the United States. Now, you can even see the share in the mobile and the desktop searches to plan your strategy area for each screen. Now, this can even allow you to review your product mix to ensure it is competitive for your categories and also adjust your promotion strategy to align with popular products. Now, here's a pro tip, is to get personalized reports via email with weekly and monthly trends for category and products relevant to your business. Now, the Merchant Center bestseller report goes deeper by showing you what products are best sellers and which you should carry in your feed. This gives you valuable direction for you to decide by products what you should add to your current merchandising strategy. 
It also helps you to adjust your budget and bids to get full value of top selling products. Now to get started, you can actually navigate to the growth tab in the merchant center. Here you'll find the best sellers report. And in each report, you can filter the information by country and Google product category. You know, for years, one of the top requests we got from merchant, merchants is how to better understand the performance by category holistically across search and shopping. Now, the retail categories report shows what your performance is for search and shopping across categories, allowing you to see if there is room to optimize further and also gain more click share, which translates to mind share in holiday. You know, later this year, we also plan on launching auction insights for categories across search and shopping, which will allow you to see from a competitive standpoint how you are faring and which categories you need to be more aggressive across the platform. You know, now that you know, you know, what trends look at, well, how should you form your goals for the season? Well, first is to make sure the objective is measurable. You know, this will let you easily check on progress and evaluate success. So make sure to include both the absolute number and also the percentage change over time. And secondly, is to set a time frame for the objectives. You know, when do you want to see the results? And you can use this to really evaluate success. Now, and you know, just to finish it off, you know, goals need to be customer centric. You know, really ask yourself, can you tie your goals back to your customer's purchasing journey? Right? And if you can, it just gives you more feedback, more information to make sure that you're doing it right. Now, after you've really thought through your goals, it's important to make sure that they're aligned. Now, first is we have the business objective, which is the highest level. Now, for this goal, we would recommend talking to the CEO. Your business objective usually falls into three main categories. One is going to be your market share. Next is going to be your revenues or profit. And really to keep in mind is great business objectives here listed in green and measurable, which is listed in yellow and time bound, which is listed in green. And then raise the bar above what you're already achieving. Now on the right side, we have an example to showcase how this plays out. Now, in this example, the business objective is to increase revenue by 30% from 2 million to 2.6 million from October through December, 2021. Now it's time to make sure your marketing, your campaign, your media objectives are all working towards that same goal. Next, we have the marketing objective. Now, this is how the CEO's business objective is achieved. It's usually set by the CMO, and can be anything from generating leads to growing in-store sales. Now, in the case of our example on the screen, our marketing objective is to grow in-store sales by 20% by the end of Q4. Now, things get even more detailed with your media objective. Now, the media objectives help you meet the marketing objectives, which in this case is growing in-store sales. Now, they're usually set by the digital marketing team, and you can have both performance and brand media objectives. Now, in this example, our performance objective is to drive 13,000 in-store purchases through local campaigns in Q4. You know, our brand and media objective is to really demonstrate 30% ad recall with a YouTube and for a reach campaign with local extensions in Q4. You know, finally, we have our campaign objective. This is where the rubber really meets the road. You know, campaign objectives are the KPIs used to gauge the success of a specific marketing campaign. Our performance campaign objective is to drive 26,000 store visits from local campaigns in Q4. Now, since we know 50% of visits results in a purchase, well, that's how we'll meet our 13,000 in-store purchase media goals. You know, our brand goal will be to drive 22 million impressions on YouTube at roughly $4 or CPM. 
which will help us really reach our brand media objectives of 30% of ad recall. Now, let's see how they are all aligned and really work together. Now, it's not always the easiest task, but it is really, really important to work across your businesses to ensure all of these goals are aligned for success. Now, once you've taken a look at the latest trends and insights and even set your aligned your goals, now it's time to think through how your businesses or your business will allocate budget during the holidays. Now, let's kind of talk you through a few quick tips for setting your investment. Now, first is we always recommend you evaluate previous holiday period performance by adding impression share columns to your account. Now, this year, we highly recommend you check 2019 data too. Now, you should always keep in mind your competitive positioning and use these tools like performance planner and optimization score to evaluate the impact of changes to your account. Now we'll learn more about this and performance planner and optimization score later in our sessions, but we highly recommend you use both of these tools regularly for this holiday season. Now when setting up your budget, it's important to keep in mind that demand will likely increase for your product. So we want you to leave budget headroom while your goals are being met. You can also ensure that your budget is effectively allocated towards your top performing campaigns by using shared budgets. And lastly, we recommend downloading the Google Ads mobile app to really monitor your campaigns in real time during your most important days. Now, when setting your budget it is really important to keep in mind that demand will likely increase for your product. So we want to leave budget headroom while your goals are being met. Now you can also ensure that your budget is effectively allocated towards your top performing campaigns by using shared budgets. And lastly, we also recommend downloading the Google Ads mobile app to monitor your campaigns in real time during your most important days. Now, to take a step further, here are three ways to use Performance Planner to really capture seasonal demands. Now, first is we really want you to make sure that you plan ahead to ensure your investment is sufficient for reaching your seasonal and your business objectives. Really plan optimal budget and bid settings regularly throughout the peak season. Now, to do that, you can even adjust forecasts to account for expected future performance changes. People often ask, like, what percentage of my budget should I spend on each platform? Well, the thing is, I wish there was a magic number here, but to tell you the truth, it's kind of very so much account by account. It really depends on a ton of factors like your business goals, your industry, and even your competition. So what I recommend is to talk to your Google team for more insight into how much of your investment should really go to each. Now, typically for online sales, we recommend the majority of your budget be spent on search and shopping to show up on potential customers are searching for your products. Now, whether they're doing research or comparing prices or even ready to buy. And then you use discovery and video and local campaigns if applicable to close the loop with customers and maximize lifetime value. Now, this can vary greatly based on your business goals. Now, I wanna take a look at the second step in the formula is how to get ready. And to do that, I'm gonna pass it off to Carol to talk you through the next two steps and, but just remember to really keep your questions coming and I'll see you soon. Thanks, AK. Hi everyone and welcome to Think Retail. My name is Carolini and I'm an automation product lead working with Google advertisers to help them reach their goals. Today, I wanna help you reach your goals by using online to offline solutions to grow your in-store sales this holiday season. With that, let's jump right in. This next session, 
we're going to talk about getting ready for the holiday season based on three simple concepts. First one is building robust measurement, followed by building a value-based bidding strategy, and finally, building a powerful creative. To simplify, we're going to call these the big three, measurement, automation, and creative. Let's start with measurement. To prepare to track your offline metrics, you're going to need to follow three basic steps. First one is to connect digital presence to store visits. Second, attribute a value to your store visits. And third, attribute conversions across touch points. First, it's critical to connect your digital presence to store visits. Store visits are our simplest and most scalable form of offline measurement and can be used across multiple channels to understand omni-channel performance throughout the funnel. When users click on your ads and then visit your store, we attribute those store visits back to the ad clicks. It's that simple. We do this in a privacy-safe manner as we only report aggregated and anonymized data to our advertisers. Store visit data can be tied to individual ad clicks, impressions, or people. Once you have your store visits measurement set up, you need to determine how valuable a store visit is to your business. Understanding the value of a store visit can be as simple as the following formula. In-store conversion rate multiplied by in-store average order value. For example, if one out of four customers purchase when they are in your store and they spend on average $400, then calculating your store visits, we're going to take 25% times 400 which equals $100. The important thing to remember here is not to worry about calculating the absolutely perfect store visit value, but rather just start with a value and optimize from there. Getting started with measuring store visits at a reasonable value is more important than waiting for perfection. The next step is ensuring your attribution is accurate with data-driven attribution. Data-driven attribution gives credit for conversions based on how people search for your business and decide to become your customers. It uses data from your account to determine which ads, keywords, and campaigns have the greatest impact on your business goals. You can use data-driven attribution for website and Google Analytics conversions from your search network campaigns. Although it is recommended to you always use data-driven attribution when available, if you're not eligible for DDA, use another non-last click attribution model, such as time decay, linear, or position-based. To recap, measuring and valuing offline metrics is a key first step to success when growing offline sales. Make sure you connect digital presence to store visits, understand the value of your store visits, and utilize DDA to better understand the value of each touch point. Time to move on to automation, and specifically, smart bidding. When we talk about automation, we're talking about auction power technology through Google smart bidding. And there's three primary benefits to that. The first one is advanced machine learning that drives informed, accurate bidding decisions. The second, unparalleled optimization frequency and precision that adjusts bids for every auction. And the third, a rich set of auction time signals used to capture contextual relevance for every unique search. There's so many signals we're using with automation that would be impossible to account for by using a manual strategy. If you want to go one step further, you can actually maximize your revenue and return on investment by using value-based bidding strategies. With value-based bidding, you're going to differentiate your customers and bid on what matters to drive increased performance by letting the system know which potential customers are most valuable to your business. By bidding towards the most valuable customers, you'll be able to deliver incremental revenue uplift and profitability to your business. In addition to that, smart bidding with store visits or store sales will automatically adapt to fluctuations in online and offline conversions for each auction. As your store traffic shifts, bidding dynamically adjusts to favor signals that are most predictive of a conversion. If you have an e-commerce presence, I recommend you pay attention to this one. For accurate measurement, it's key to optimize towards the full value of offline and online sales across channels. We don't recommend having siloed KPIs for target setting on online and offline, as the fluidity between the two sh for shoppers is even more prominent now than ever. With measurement and automation in place, now let's take a look at our local creative best practices. First, we recommend that you focus your creative on products and categories that do well in store 
and will help you drive more food traffic to your stores. You should promote exclusives, such as available in store only, promote flagship products or new launches, and when available, include a discount to further entice people to visit your store. When it comes to creative for maps, which is applicable for local campaigns, which we'll get to shortly, use a colorful logo as much as possible, since they stand out better in maps versus white background logos. In terms of video ads for growing in-store sales, we recommend highlighting in-store products and promotions, using short videos that deliver your message quickly, ideally under 20 seconds, uploading several assets to allow for rotation of the highest performing video, and last but not least, including a reference to visit the nearest store location in your video. If you're interested in video creative support, there's three options for creating your video ad. First one is Video Builder which will create a video out of text and images. It's quick, cheap, and simple, and if done correctly, it can work really well. Another way is to use YouTube Creative Works to take an existing video, ex for example, one that you used as a TV commercial, and re-edit it just to fit your needs. As a third route, uh, which will also give you the biggest creative freedom, but is also usually the most expensive option, is creating a new video from scratch. Be sure to work with your Google team to learn more about the best practices and solutions for your campaigns. Now that we have our objectives set, our measurement, bidding, and creative ready to go, it's time to supercharge our efforts and take action in step three. We'll break this into two separate parts. First, we'll talk through capturing existing demand at the bottom of the funnel. Second, we'll discuss how to generate new demand by moving up the funnel through platforms like video. Let's start with how to capture demand at the bottom of the funnel. The first step in capturing demand is building your digital storefront. And you can do this by linking your Google My Business to your Google Ads account, updating your Google My Business to make sure your customers have the latest information, and using our enabling location extensions on search, video, and display. Let's spend the next few minutes going into each of these steps in more detail. Google My Business creates a free online presence on Google Search and Maps. By linking it to Google Ads, you'll be able to promote your business to reach more customers and drive in-store footfall. Here, you can keep your info updated by adding or editing attributes, such as curbside pickup or business hours. Dining and shopping businesses have attributes at the top of business profiles to inform customers about service availability. This new info will prominently appear on your business profile when customers search for your business on Google Maps and Google Search. It's really important to make sure your customers have the latest information this holiday season, so be sure to confirm whether store locations are open or closed, including business information such as description, posts, and etc. If you have special operating hours during the holidays and hours for special services, Share detailed and timely updates around closures, safety, and hygiene best practices through posts. Special services like drive through or different ways to complete your purchase, like curbside, delivery, or in-store pickup. We heard from retailers how hard it has been to having to physically open and close your stores throughout the pandemic. We're here to help you re-enable your stores digitally as they reopen. The steps are the same, whether you're using location extensions for the first time or reopening stores after a closure. To do this, first, simply link your Google My Business account to your Google Ads account. You then add your location extensions at a CID or campaign level. In Google My Business, you can use labels to note which locations are open and re-enable location extensions only for open stores. If you are a manufacturer, you can use affiliate location extensions to drive customers to your affiliates, which are even easier to set up. You can simply select your locations from a curated list rather than having to link your Google My Business. For affiliate location extensions, we also recommend you confirm that the affiliate store you want to send customers to is open. Once you have your Google My Business and location extension set up, let's talk about local campaigns, which can help you reach and engage with shoppers nearby. Local campaigns can help you with three things. Number one, finding the right shopper by targeting users most likely to visit and prioritizing new visitors. We do this by bidding to store visits or local actions, such as when users click to get directions 
or call your location. Second, it will help you by reaching users at the right time when they are most likely to be influenced to visit your store, triggered by local queries, distance to store location, and device. And third, by delivering the right message wherever the shopper chooses to research and shop. That could be on search, maps, business profile page, YouTube, or display. People are now planning ahead more before they go anywhere, including shopping in store. Local campaigns allow you to better reach and engage customers as they are planning their visits to different destinations with relevant and helpful information for things they might need, want, or be interested in. With consumer mobility patterns unpredictably changing, Google Maps has become a key tool to reach potential shoppers. Be sure to be visible and discoverable when shoppers are planning their purchases. Local campaigns allow you to reflect your holistic marketing message with highly customizable creatives. This, en this will enable you to highlight the changes you have made to your services, such as curbside pickup, shop by appointment, safety measures, special and smart business hours. All of these features will help adapt in this new world of allowing customers to get into the security they seek to be confident in going to your store locations. We're constantly driving innovation in the local campaign space, including a product showcasing feature in your services. This product ads feature can help advertisers to provide customers with the information they need to visit their stores, including product availability, pricing and promotions, and to entice potential customers to visit the stores. This is available on new surfaces, such as Display, Business Profile, and YouTube. Before we jump into generating demand, let's take a look at how Hellsberg Diamonds used local campaigns to reach and engage customers in a unique way over the past year, and how they plan on doing so over the holidays. For over a century, the mission of Hellsberg Diamonds has been to make people feel loved, They've created a legacy built on trust, knowledge, and high-quality diamonds at an incredible price. In an effort to grow their business and reach new customers, Hellsberg uses a full-funnel, omni-channel Google ad strategy, combining dynamic search ads, shopping, local inventory ads, and YouTube. Over the past year and a half, Hellsberg has had to think outside the box for ways to engage their customers meaningfully, as they were unable to shop in-store as often. Hellsberg Diamonds had to remain flexible and made several strategic shifts that were tailored to these uncertain times and changing trends in consumer behavior. By partnering with WPromote and Google, Hellsberg shifted their marketing strategy to focus more heavily on local advertising to drive in-store sales. And once their over 200 stores began to reopen, they were able to strategically target high-priority store locations with local campaigns, seeing a 19 times return on their ad spend. They also relied on YouTube to provide education on the additional shopping experiences they offered, like curbside pickup and pickup in-store options. The result? They were able to grow excitement around the brand and successfully re-engaged customers with seasonal offers and tailored gifting recommendations. Hellsberg is looking forward to building on the success they've seen with added excitement this year, finally being able to welcome the loyal Hellsberg customers back into the stores once again. Next up, we're going to talk about strategies to generate demand at the top of the funnel. When it comes to driving store visits, Trueview for Reach is a great way to reach an even larger audience across YouTube using location extensions. Make your video interactive by displaying information from a Google My Business feed or an affiliate location feed, and help show business information alongside the video to boost store visits and transactions. To remind customers of your ads and brand using video ads, you can also use bumper ads with location extensions. Bumper ads are a reliable six-second hit of video. Since it's a full story arc and not just six seconds of a longer ad, this format delivers impact. In fact, across thousands of campaigns, bumper ads drove recall in nine out of 10 cases. If you're an omni-channel retailer with an e-commerce presence, we also recommend you check out video action campaigns. Video action campaigns are a simple and cost-effective way to drive more conversions across YouTube. They take the best features out of Trueview for Action and scale them to more places on and off YouTube, all in a single automated campaign. 
we've made it to our fourth and final step, evaluate and expand. Before I kick it over to AK to wrap up the presentation, I want to thank you for the great questions and for all the engagement and for being a part of Think Retail this year. Over to you, AK. Really, thank you, Carol. That was a lot of valuable information, and it really brings us to the final section, and that is evaluate and expand. Now, as time passes, you better understand how your ads are performing. Here, we'll show you how you can use this information to optimize your performance, test new strategies, and also find more opportunities for growth. Now, when it comes to evaluating your campaigns and even your optimization score is a great way to estimate how well your Google Ads accounts are set to perform. Now, these scores run from zero to 100%. Now, with 100% meaning that your account is optimized to perform at its potential. Now, it surfaces relevant optimization recommendation and even estimates the impact of their implementation on your account performance in real time. Now, just to note, the score will actually go up as you implement recommendations and equally, though, as your score can also go down if new recommendations get surfaced in your account. So you just really want to keep in mind of when anything's coming in to really identify what's happening to your account, either positively or negatively. And we also want you to be able to check out those recommendations tabs to see your optimization score and also the recommendations for your account. Now, when evaluating in-store performance, we also recommend that you check out the local campaign assets report to evaluate creative opportunities. Now, the asset report lists each asset used in local campaign and also allows you to compare performance across a variety of assets. Now, over time, you'll be able to make strategic decisions about which assets to rotate, which to phase out, and which are most effective for driving your local goals. It also gives you an edge of new assets to create that are likely to have good performance based on similar assets. And to really close out this section, we want to share a few helpful strategies to help you evaluate in-store campaigns. Now, first, another in-store KPI can never hurt. So to get a complete view of your customer's path to purchase, you can update your Google Ads conversion settings to include a local action value. Now, once you assign secondary actions like clicks for directions, you'll be able to launch local campaigns with local actions as well. Now, once your local campaigns have gathered enough data, we also recommend taking a look at whether you can bundle locations to create subsets based on performance. Now, this will really allow you to get more sophisticated with your local campaign strategy and also tailor your budget and creative for each bundle. Now, for example, let's say, you know, we've seen success with customer bundling rural versus urban locations. Lastly, we recommend checking out the per store report and time lag report for more insights into top performing stores and your customer's path to purchase as you evaluate your Google in-store efforts. Whew. All right. That was a lot. I mean, and we've almost made it. I hope your head isn't blown, but let's just take a moment to wrap up all of what we have learned today because it has been a lot. Now, follow us here. Now, as we learned at the beginning, the shopping landscape has changed forever. You know, shoppers are increasingly turning to Google for things they want to buy online, as well as for finding what they need in stores locally. Now, this year, the majority of consumers are already planning to shop in store 
online for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and really demonstrating the ongoing importance of an omni strategy during the shopping period, really during this holiday season. Now, but what I want to do is let's just let's just let's just take a closer look at what we've learned in each step of the ads growth formula. Now, for the first um, of this section is really to set objectives. See, we've learned the importance of setting measurable, time-based, and customer-centric goals that are informed by trends and aligned to one another. Now, in the get ready section, we discussed measurement, automation, and creatives. And for in-store campaigns, it's critical to accurately measure and value offline conversions with store visits. Now, if you have an e-commerce presence, it's also crucial to evaluate performance by looking at the omni-channel ROAS, or the return on ad spend, and use a value-based bidding strategy in order to balance both channels effectively. Now, in the third section of Take Action, you know, Carol did an amazingly fantastic, phenomenal job discussing how to capture demand by covering Google My Business best practices and local campaigns. Now, while also showing how to generate demand with video ads. Now, finally, we discuss strategies for evaluating and expanding your campaigns, specifically how to optimization score can help surface these recommendations automatically and how to evaluate and optimize your local efforts. Now, on behalf of Carol, myself, and the entire Google Academy and Think Retail teams, we want to say a heartfelt thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Now, we really hope that you found today's content to be extremely valuable, and we really, really, really appreciate your feedback. Now, in fact, a few lucky winners will even receive a Google Nest Hub for filling out the feedback form. So be sure to get your submitted. It's going to help these sessions be better. We really want to make sure this is valuable for you. And if you weren't able to join us earlier for the Grow Online Sales Sessions, I highly recommend you check out those as well um, for some really important e-commerce trends and strategies. So we also have a series of advanced training, including of get your data in order to drive the business results, create flexible shopping experiences, and also differentiate and reach new customers that are aired earlier today too. So really check those out on demand if you're interested in discovering more advanced strategies. Now, you know, that's it's been an amazing time and that's all of the great content that we have for you today. We just want to say thank you for taking the time to join us. We greatly appreciate it. We want you to have a wonderful holiday season. Have an amazing day. And we'll see you next time. Take care, y'all. Thank you.